Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start the dilution process. I'm still going to use the pot that I cooked in. I've already boiled a whole bunch of distilled water. I'm going to go ahead and turn my crock pot on high and get the warming process started. And I'm going to put about, I have 30 ounces of paste, so I'm going to put in 30 ounces of water. Dead gummit. My scale. is going wonky. Ugh. Because my scale's going wonky, I've got to do this weird. Okay. 225. Nineteen eighty. There's thirty ten. That'll do to start out with. So I'm going ahead and putting it in the pot that I cooked in. Let me turn off my scale, conserve that low battery. And before I put my paste in, what I'm going to do is to take my spoon here and scrape down the sides. Because that's still good soap in there. Now this will probably bring up my paste percentage to, or my paste amount to eh, maybe 30 and a half ounces. It might give me an extra half an ounce with a little bit over I had, uh, couldn't weigh when I was transferring to the bowl. Because there was a little amount that I couldn't weigh. Okay, now start out with a one to one ratio. One ounce paste, one ounce water. We have 30 ounces of paste, so I'm using 30 ounces of water. And you just kind of drop it in. You're going to want to keep your pot on high because you want to get this water as hot as possible. Another thing that you have to remember about how much paste you used is you're neutralizing. You want to put three quarters of an ounce for every pound of paste. So I've got 30 ounces. That's almost two pounds, a little bit less than two pounds. So I'm going to need an ounce and a half of neutralizer. I'm correct because I use borax. Now, borax would thicken a soap that wasn't that was less than 20% coconut. However, mine is not. everything off the sides. That was in the refrigerator probably for an hour or so, maybe two hours. It did harden and firm up in a lot of places. I did not leave it in long enough to firm up all the way through, but my clarity test tells me it doesn't matter. I am going to get some more oils, I think, and i am got a new soap idea that I want to do. I 
one of the selling points of my soap is that I add tuss of silk to every bar. It really gives it a luxurious, slippery feeling. It's quite nice. I was just reading. I, I'd always wondered whether this was possible since potassium hydroxide does not dissolve the silk as quickly and as, so, and as thoroughly as sodium hydroxide. So there would be some silk remnants that are, and even sometimes when I make bar soap I notice this happens. Some silk remnants that don't get totally dissolved and they're saturated with lye and they can make a lye pocket. That's why many times if I'm not sure whether all my silk dissolved or not I'll strain it. Alright, this is the last of the paste. Now it's getting kind of late here. What I could do is to turn this on low and just let it cook all night. See where we are when I get back and I get up tomorrow. Uh, my son had to remind me it was Friday. I thought it was Thursday still. I didn't get my Thursday shows. <laughs> I'm not getting my Friday shows. Cold Justice is not on tonight. Very, very disappointing. I miss it. Nothing's on tonight. Nothing's been on lately in preparation for the holiday weekend, which is Memorial Day this weekend. All right, so now we're going to kind of mush this up with our spatula because it allows us to mush. Remember, this is still a soft uh, paste. I'm actually considering uppering the percentage of my sodium hydroxide. Maybe that'll help. I'll test that out next time. Liquid soap recipes are just like bar soap recipes. Just the slightest change can make a world of difference. All right, it looks good. Let's go ahead, scrapey, scrapey, knock it back down, and put the lid back on. We'll come back and check it maybe in an hour or so, see how well it's doing. And what you want to do is to do, uh, like I said, a one-on-one -on -one ratio first, one ounce paste, one ounce water, and then slowly add more water. Now I'm probably going to give this a couple, three hours to dissolve, and like I said, I might end up going to bed and coming back tomorrow, but we'll see. Anyway, see you in a bit. All right, here is when you can tell that it really is paste. And it really is translucent. Look at that. All that is translucent. So regardless of whether it is loose, as you're cooking it, don't panic. This is an easy way to clean your pot, too. <laughs> Go ahead and dilute it as soon as it's a little bit hard in the same pot you cooked it in. And all that scrapey on the side that you didn't get in is going to get back into the dilution mixture, mixture anyway. I can already tell I'm going to need uh, probably another 15 ounces. Got to do it a one to one and a half ratio. I'll probably start out with five, out, five ounce increments because I know I'm going to need more than one to one. It's got too much olive oil. Olive oil takes a lot to dilute. But it's nice because you get more liquid soap out of a, an ounce of paste than your, like my pure coconut and uh, lard laundry soap. I have to add, what did I say? Did I say earlier? Um, I have to add about, it gives me, I have to add about 1 to 1.15 or 1 to 1.25 maybe. And I do my dilutions kind of strangely. 
I don't keep a thing of hot distilled water oh, handy nice at the first. Now uh, towards the end the when I'm adding one ounce increments at a time, I might keep it on a low burner back there. So just so you can see, all of this is translucent. It's going to be a good batch of soap. I'm watching Log Cabin Living on HGTV. Love log cabins. That's one of my weaknesses. A log or a stone cabin. So long as it has a wood burning fireplace, I'd be happy either way. Instead, I got a trailer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're gonna give it about another hour, I think. I love the master. Smush that down in there. All right, so let's go see the rest of it. around. Okay. See what happens in an hour. A nice lofted space. It's got the textured berber. Nice big open. If anybody's ever made liquid soap, you know once you get. Uh, to the dilution phase, how easy it is to clean up. This is an easy way to make it in your cook pot. Now I let my cook pot cool down completely. Then I start a diluting process. Okay, we'll see you in about an hour. Okay, I'm going to add another 20 ounces. I did a little research on dilution rates and one post that I read in my group of liquid soapers on Yahoo uh, linked to a site that gave Catherine Fowler's dilution rates and basically since I have a significant amount of olive oil it's going to take at least a 20% solution which means it's going to be one ounce of paste to two ounces of water so I'm not putting quite that much in right now. I've got my crock pot down to low. And I just put another 20 in. That means for 30 ounces of paste, I've got 50 ounces of water in here. And I'm going to let this dilute overnight because I'm getting tired. And I want to go to sleep. So we're just going to let that, in fact, I might turn it down just to warm and let it slowly denude over the night because I'll sleep about 10 or 12 hours. So it's probably better if I go ahead and put it on warm. I could pop it in the oven if I wanted to, but I don't. Which reminds me, I've got food in the oven, I've got to put in the fridge. So, we're going to let that set on warm overnight, and then I'll check in the morning, see how it is, be back later. Okay, it's um, noon the next day. I put this on, I think, warm, and let it just cook and melt down after I put that last 20 ounces in. Now, when I woke up this morning, it was all filmed over on the top, so I've broken it up. I put another 10 ounces in. <clears throat> so that means that I've got a total of 60 ounces of water in with this recipe. <clears throat> now I just added the water not too long ago. So I'm going to give this an hour or so. It may take all day for me to keep adding water, melting this down. Liquid soap is not like bar soap takes a lot longer to finally get your end product. Now like bar soap, um, liquid soap does need to set in order to not cure like bar soap into a harder bar and evaporate the water, but to settle down. It's called sequestering and you sequester it for a few days or even a week. The longer you sequester it, the lower the pH becomes and the less cloudy any cloudy soap might come. It doesn't matter if your soap is a little bit cloudy. I don't know if you can, let's see if I can get this to where you can see it. 
I still kept my test batch where I tested my clarity. So let's see if I can show you that. Give me a second and then we'll get it ready. Okay, almost there. But there's a difference. I didn't show you much on the clarity test at all, I know, on how to do it, but <laughs> I did explain it. And basically, a little cloudiness is okay in your soap because it'll usually settle out during sequestering. But <clears throat> you don't want it milky. You want to be able to see through it a little bit. Even if it is a little bit cloudy, you still want to be able to see through it a little bit. Here, I showed you kind of what it looks like. But this is a little bit cloudy, but basically it is clear. You can still read through it. See, you can still read through it. Yes, I got bugs. So on the clarity test, it passed even after probably about four and a half hours, five hours of cook. But I did go ahead and let it cook a little bit longer. You can leave your coke, your uh, coke, plat, soap paste cooking. It's not going to do a bit of harm to it to leave it cooking for a while. Some people, like I mentioned before, will cook their soap paste in the oven for two days. And that's probably because this one was a liquid soap with goat milk that I had seen. Now goat milk soap will turn this beautiful amber color. Most normal liquid soaps are not going to have a, unless you use a lake dye I think, I'm not even sure about that, they're not going to have any color other, other than an amber. And you can use these liquid colors to your heart's content, but I'm telling you right now, if it starts off at an amber, when you put red in it, you're going to get orange. Nobody wants an orange soap. So my thought, although I haven't tried it yet, but my thought is to get some ahoba beads and color the soap that way. It'll get, and the ahoba beads, whenever they um, burst, when you use it, is actually going to add a little bit more moisturizing to the skin. At least that's what I've read. What I think. Now it's clumping up again which is good. Let's wipe this off. I turned it back on high. Now there's nothing wrong with squitzing it down with a little bit of alcohol. Remember? Kind of knock those bubbles down. 91% alcohol. I'm going to actually get to the point where I'm going to start buying Everclear for my alcohol. That's pure grain alcohol and I will cook my liquid soap with alcohol is my next test. And then after that we're going to try working with glycerin with it. So I've got a lot of testing to do on how to do the until I get a recipe that I like. This is the easiest, believe me. And the small it uses the smallest amount of ingredients. Okay, so we're gonna let that cook for probably about another hour, and it's not really cooking. It's just um, put this on. My, it's just dissolving the soap. It's melting the soap. So we'll let go ahead and let this go for about another hour, and then we'll come back. Okay, Bye. this is really not dissolving. I came back in here just now, and it actually all of this had <coughs> floated to the top and uh, and skimmed over. So I'm going to add some more water. Now one thing that I did do was to test my fragrance. There's different ways to test fragrance between cold process bar soap making and liquid soap making. <coughs> liquid soap making is a heck of a lot less time and a lot easier. And I also wanted to show you how this is thickened up with the um, sodium hydroxide. Now what I did to test my fragrance, I got myself a little pippet 
here just like that yeah I know I've got my smoky smoky and I went in here and kind of moved some of this undissolved paste around with a gravy ladle and just kind of let some of it seep into my ladle I just filled my ladle up as full as I could get it without any paste chunks in there and then I took that <coughs> and I transferred it over to my little cup. And what I did is put about 10 drops of fragrance in here. Now this could probably use just a little bit more water, but look how much thicker this is with that sodium hydroxide in it. It's not thin. There's a little bit of uh, undissolved chunks in there that have to be dissolved, but that is a much thicker liquid soap than just the thin. And it actually could be that the uh, fragrance oil kind of thickened it up. That's always a possibility. Did make it a little bit cloudy, but I'm not too worried about it. Now, the test, this is one part of the test, how it reacts in the soap. The other part of the test is to see if it turns the smell. And it does not. Now I'm going to let that set for a little bit. I might put a smidge more water in it. It does turn it cloudy at first. Well, that's a nice liquid soap. I might not have to do anything to thicken it up at all. If I can keep it at this consistency and keep it and have it all dissolved. See how thick that is? So that's how you test your fragrances in liquid soap. Just a scooper full, that's probably about a one and a quarter cup scoop, and then just uh, of your diluted soap, and then I put just 10 drops. That's all I did was 10 drops. It has a nice fresh fruity fragrance that, and what I'm using is heather. It actually does not have a fruit fragrance. I was confusing that with the, it's actually, it smells like a honeysuckle. Not sure, but it really does have a floral scent. Now, a lot of times florals will seize up a bar soap. So it could be that it acts in much the same way that in liquid soap than it does in bar soap. It might actually accelerate to this thicker soap in a liquid soap. So we'll come back in about a, I've got some hot water going here. I'm gonna add probably another, let me see. How much do I wanna add? Look how that's skimming over. Um, this is not dissolving. Let's see if we can weigh this. Let's see if we can weigh this and see if we can figure out how much we need to get. There's three ounces. This is not precise. Six, almost seven. Sun's home. Say hello, son. Hello, son. Yeah. I knew that was coming. And then just kind of drip off your diluted section. And you don't have to get every bit of scrap. You just want to get an idea of how much is in there that's not diluted yet. It will skim over on you. So there's about 15. Let's put about 15 ounces of water. I'm just going to pour that back in there. And then I'm going to fill this up, push this out of the way, and pull him forward with about 15 ounces of water. If I've got that much. Okay, that's 145, zero it out. 15 ounces of water. Twelve, thirteen 13 and a half. 1485, 1540, good enough. 
We'll put 15.40 ounces of water in. My scale needs to be replaced really bad. Okay, let's give this a quick stir again. Get you over. And we'll see how that does. I will be adding my fragrance and my neutralization to, uh, today. And then we'll sequester it. I'll probably come back with a totally new video after I sequester it. I might combine all these into one. Okay, let's get all this off. back on and I think I might test this fragrance soap here and see how well it does yeah oh gosh yeah look at this look how well it's thickening up I might not need any kind of thickener in there at all one thing about some favorite fragrances <coughs> oh boy he bought cherry sours home and you can't eat those. I was wondering because they're uh, gummy. I, I can, but I can suck the hell out of them. Okay. <laughs> they didn't have dessert mints. So. Oh, well, that's okay. <clears throat> there is a difference in fragrance oils between a bar soap and a liquid soap. Some fragrance oils, and even out of the bottle, some fragrance oils, I've got one. Let me find it. It's called Spiced Amber Ale. It's a brambleberry fragrance. And this actually, out of the bottle, OOB, smells like, oh my God, it's got cedar wood in it. It smells like a man's soap. Smells like, not, not Curb, that other popular, what's that popular aftershave stuff you use? No, no, no. It, it's your body spray. Oh, Axe. Axe, that's right. It, it smells like a, an Axe product is what it smells like. But you put it in liquid soap and it smells nasty. I haven't tried it in a... Have I tried it in a bar soap yet? I think I tried it as a mixture, a base in a mixture of other fragrance oils that turned out fine. But it cannot be used in a, uh, it just cannot be used in liquid soap because it smells musty, moldy, and just flat and nasty. So always test your fragrances in your liquid soap before you add the whole, what, two ounces maybe in a big batch because you might just ruin your batch and it'll be, just be nasty. That's why I went ahead and tested this to see how well this fragrance did and I can waste 10 drops and it's not going to be that big of a deal and it smells good some liquid soaps will even out of the bottle smell chemically I've had a couple from indigo that I got that actually had a plasticky smell underneath it all I don't know how it's going to work too well in, well actually I do know how it worked. I made some uh, samples and it worked out okay in bar soap. Don't know how it's going to work out in liquid soap though, so we'll just see. Always test your fragrances no matter whether you use bar or liquid soap. Anyway, I'll be back in a little bit. We're going to let this uh, melt down for probably another hour. I'll probably be back about 2.30 on Saturday, the, what is this, 23rd I think, of May. 2015. I wanted to show you here what I mean by it's gotten a skin on top. I haven't touched this. It's probably been about an hour. See, it's skimmed over on top. Got this whole area. Now watch what happens. Still maintains the uh, 
part of the pot here, so you know that's a skim. Move it all together. This is all diluted soap right here. This is your undiluted portion. So we still got quite a bit here that's not wanting to dilute and it's skimming over. When it starts to skim over, it's not diluting any further. So that's when you need to come in and adjust your water. So let me get some water started here. Get my scale over here. See how much I've got. Grams. Should be ounces right there. It's starting to stick to the side over here. All right. It's raining here. Looks like I have about Five ounces, almost six. Yeah, We're going to measure it like this, and we have 225, so that's about 8 ounces of paste still we've got to dilute. So we're going to need to put some more water in there. Yes, it's Law & Order SBU again. So let's go ahead and maybe put another 8 ounces of water in, something like that. And we're going to use, see it's 250. It's actually 220, but there's still some paste left in here. That's what's weighing it down. Even some over here. Okay. Two thirty. It's about two twenty. It's what I weighed it new and clean and empty. Okay, so let's take that off. Leaving it on the ounces. My dogs thought that there was somebody here because I clicked the scale against the. Um, Ice cream meets candy bar. Toaster oven. Had to think for a minute of the, what it was. I knew what it was. I just had to think of the words. I'm getting senile. Okay. Now, if you notice, when I pour my water, it's into the same measuring bowl. I just zero the scale, scale out, tear it out. Okay. Something's wrong. Pick them up. 
I want to see Jurassic World when it comes out. I love dinosaurs. I especially like that they portray them in their natural environment and with their natural personalities. Predators or grazer. They're either predators or prey. That's what their DNA makes, forces them to be. They're animalistic. Oh, same thing. Predator or prey. Same as the animal kingdom. Okay, so let's break this up some into littler pieces. While this water heats up. What I say about eight ounces. Now, if you're going to make liquid soap and sell it, which is what I like to do, it's going to be kind of a chore to calculate your time that you spent making it, because as you can see, I've been doing this, <coughs> pardon me, for two days now. Started yesterday, actually one day, 24 hours. Okay, it's looking a little bit better. Get all that skim stuff kind of smushed down in there. Break it up. I should be using my hard spoon, but this will work. It's a little bit more work on my part to break up these big pieces. But I do like using a spatula because it does kind of slide off the spatula. Don't forget to scrape down your sides. That has a lot of, a lot, a lot of paste clinging to the sides, and you want to really get that down in. Somebody's got a big mouth. Look at Sorry, that. The papers. See that white right there? Right around here. That was from the outside. Tell, because it keeps cooking. So scrape it down. You don't want to cook it anymore. The heat from the crock pot will do any further cooking for you as it dilutes. Now I'm not the expert on liquid soap. There are other people out there that are far better at this than me. All I'm showing you here is what I'm going through with this particular recipe. And my actual goal was to tell you not to freak out when it turns soupy during the cook. That it'll still turn out to be a beautiful, beautiful soap. Okay, let's put about eight ounces of water in. Move this guy out of the way. Pull this guy forward. Zero him out. Turn the burner off. Okay, my scale is going wonky on me because it's a low battery. I know this pot weighs 2.2 ounces. Sometimes I have to wiggle the battery in there. See if I can do it. Uh, it's about eight seventy. We'll work with that. Okay, that worked. Everything is diluted now. It's on low, and I'm not getting any skim, so we're good. Now, I have 30 ounces of paste. <clears throat> Let me get my calculator on my phone right quick. Okay, let's see. Calculator. Thirty ounces of paste divided by sixteen ounces in a pound gives us one point eight seven five pounds. 
We're going to multiply that times 0.75. We're going to need about one and a half ounces of diluted borax. Now, the way you need to uh, dilute borax, first thing we need to do to get uh, things out of our way. Okay, first thing we need is six ounces of water. See how much is in here. There's 8.75. So let's pour a little bit off. I'm going to do about six and a half. Give it about a half of an ounce for, or a quarter, maybe even just a quarter of an ounce for evaporation. 6.15, that's good enough. Okay. Let's get the fire started under that. We had a flash flood warning come through on my phone <clears throat> earlier. Now we need three ounces of borax. And that is a considerable amount. I use 20 mule team borax right at three ounces. Okay. We're keeping the crock pot on low. Let me fill up my. Ah. Where's my pippet? Let me wash. Yep. I'm going to fill up my alcohol bottle. I can find the alcohol. Oh, dang it. There it is. Go, go, you need to get out of my way, son. And my dog's laying right in the way. Let me fill up my alcohol bottle. Aw, oh, he moved. He moved. He moved. Okay, so once this gets to boiling, I'm going to squirt this utensil down right quick. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. So let me get this stuff boiling. Twelve and a quarter, ten and a quarter, and two. Now you're going to just drop your borax in that boiling six ounces of water and let it dissolve. And you want to make sure it's fully dissolved all through there. It will get clear once it's dissolved. Keep on a, a hot, a low flame on it if you have to. Keep it hot because this borax will solidify if it's not kept hot. Now what I'm going to need is a little bit less than one and a half ounce of this borax concentration to neutralize my soap. Still dissolving here. It's getting there. 
you do want to make sure this is fully dissolved or you're going to have little borax pieces in your soap and it's scratchy. Keep on dissolving it. Turn up your fire if you have to. Put your borax crystals off the side, especially the side you pour down. That looks pretty good. Let's give it a quick boil. I saw a dark speck in there. That looks pretty good. All right, so I need about 1.4 ounces. Well, it's about 1.5. I don't have to put it all in. That'll work. Okay, now we've neutralized the soap. There's still a little bit of a skim there, but I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, paper back on the top and let it dissolve down again. That extra water from the borax neutralization will help dissolve it. And then we'll be ready for fragrance oil. I should sequester this for about a week or two before I fragrance it or even neutralize it, but I'm kind of anxious to get it done. So we're just going to run with it and see what happens. Okay. Now we know that we have about over a hundred ounces of soap and from our calculations we know we're going to have to divide this because I don't have enough of one fragrance oil to scent the whole thing. So we're going to do 57 ounces roughly in each batch. I've got my small crock pot and I know one of these is a not even 30 ounces. There's 32.6. Let's just measure it like that. See how good my calculations were. 32.6 and 30, what? 32.6, so that's 62.75. And it might actually let me do one whole one. I think I will. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. This isn't hot yet. So my calculations were off, didn't work. So we'll just go back to what we were doing. Yeah, that was hot. Go back. And it'll be really easy to clean up. So, let's knock the, these down and get our fragrance oil in. Designer to oversee their largest project, the kitchen. Not only is 
our designer's name also, Kate. She also just bought a Queen Anne Victorian that she is renovating very much in the Victorian style. Okay guys, so first we want to talk about the layout of the kitchen. And this tiny little space over I'm just here putting the whole two Let this settle. Fabric and some color to the space as well. So where's the oven going to go? So we're going to flip the oven. We're going to put it over. It does smell really good. Oh my gosh, that smells wonderful. Right here, and then all right, let's let that settle for a while. See what our temperature is. 142. I should be okay. Um, Flashpoint. All right, let's let that set. And that's about it. That's all you do. And we are pretty much just finished with this batch of soap. We're going to let it cool. And we'll put it in one of the empty water jugs. Right here, I just buy my distilled water at Walmart. It's good enough. Let's let it set. Let's let it cool down. I'll fun funnel it into this, and then we'll sequester it for a while. See how it nice it acts. Now, the ne I've got an idea for the next batch, but I need to order some supplies because I'm not going to color this. The only, the only color it would be is either green or orange, and it just won't look pretty. Um, I don't think I could make it any more yellow, but I could try. Anyway, we'll, uh, that's the end of this video. Uh, we'll show you how it, what it looks like once it's sequestered for a little bit. Talk to you later. Okay, this is the little bit of soap I used as a tester for my fragrance right here. So I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands. Use a little bit of it. See what happens. Very silky. Very soft. Got some nice bubbling action going on, even without castor oil. That's going to be the coconut. Gives a nice bubble. My borax pot. Okay. Squeaky clean. There's no residual oily feeling left over. All in all, it's a really nice soap. Really nice soap. And it leaves your hands smelling really clean. It doesn't really leave the fragrance on too much. Maybe once I thicken it a little bit, it will, but it does leave you smelling real clean, not like uh, oils. So, we've got a successful batch of soap. Thanks for watching. Y'all subscribe, like, share, whatever, and have a great day.